Welcome to the fifth part of the Science of Sales training course. Once again, my name is Daniel and I want to teach you all you need to know to enjoy a successful career in sales. In the previous video, I talked about the sales pitch and the various pitches you can choose from. In this video, I'll talk about overcoming objections and closing the sale. First, I'd like to briefly talk about five different types of closing before going on to talk about overcoming objections and a more in-depth look at closing afterwards. Closing is a make or break moment in the sales. Choosing the right phrases as well as the right moment to seal the deal is crucial. And this moment is probably the final verdict determining whether all your hard effort will amount to anything at all. One. The sharp angle close. Prospects will often ask for discounts or add-ons because they know they have the upper hand. If you already have approval from your manager, try the sharp angle close to catch these prospects by surprise. For instance, if they ask, hey, I'm interested, is there any way that you could drop the price by 10%? Reply, sure, but if I manage to do that for you, will you buy now? They probably won't expect this response first because you agreed to the request and second because you've proposed closing right now. Two, the summary close. This technique is repeating the items the prospect is hopefully purchasing, stressing the value and benefits in effort to get the prospect to seal the deal. For example, so we have the water saving Bosch washing machine with advanced brushless motor, a 10 year comprehensive guarantee and our free delivery and installation service. Great. When would be a good time to deliver that to you? By summarizing all of the previously agreed points into one short package, you're helping the prospect visualize what they will be getting out of this deal. Three, now or never closes. This is a technique where your offer includes a special benefit to tempt the prospect into making an immediate purchase. For example, are you sure you want to think about it? This is the last one I have available at this price. I understand you want to price around, but we've got an exclusive 30% discount for customers who sign up with us today. If you commit to buying right now, I can fast track you to the front of the queue and your product will be with you tomorrow. This technique creates a sense of urgency and helps overcome inertia when a prospect wants to buy. Four, the assumptive close. This closing technique draws the power of positive thinking. If you truly believe you will close this deal from your first call, or email outreach, this can have a profound effect on the rest of the sales process. Closely monitor your prospect's interest, engagement, and objections throughout. Ask, did what I've just told you align with your expectations? If you've just provided them with new information about your product or service, ask, does this sound like something that would be valuable to your company? Does this meet a specific need you have or a pain point? By actively listening and assuming good intent from the beginning, you'll command the direction of the entire sales process, and this is something that just wouldn't be there otherwise. Five, the soft close. The soft close is a way to explain the benefit of your product to a prospect and then ask them a low impact question to understand if they are open to finding out more. For example, if I could reduce the product's maintenance by 25%, and increase its productivity by 15% at the same time, would you be interested in learning more? You've clearly stated the benefits of the product without making any demands or sudden requests. This removes the prospect's need to commit and allow you more time to learn more about their needs. Okay, those were five examples of closing techniques you can use to drive your prospect towards making a purchase. Next, I want to talk about overcoming objections and explain several ways you can do this. Identify the real objection. Usually, the first objection thrown at you from a prospect isn't the main issue stopping them from making a purchase. It's simply a smokescreen, excuse that the prospect believes will make it much harder for you to keep moving forward. To blow away this smokescreen and identify the prospect's real objection, ask this. If I could solve that issue for you, are there any other barriers preventing you from moving ahead today? Whatever the prospect's answer to this question is, this is most likely the objection you really need to address. If the response to this question is that there are no other barriers, then you know that their first objection was their true objection. Reframe price objections. One of the most common objections you'll hear is, I'm sorry, but the price is just too high for me. To handle this, avoid getting caught up in a numbers game. 
Instead, reframe their pricing objection to prove your product's value is worth the price. Revisit all the ways your product solves their pain points and addresses their needs. Mirror objections. After a prospect raises concerns with you, simply repeat their objections back to them to reinforce that you understood them clearly the first time. By doing this, you're making the person feel heard. I spoke in depth about mirroring in an earlier video about building rapport, and here this technique can also be used. Use empathy to validate concerns. A great way to handle all types of objections is to empathize with your prospect and let them know that you understand exactly where they're coming from. Once you do this, the prospect will lower their guard and they'll be more open to accepting your solution. For example, if a prospect tells you that training their employees to use your product seems like an uphill task to them, respond something like this. That's a valid concern. I know firsthand how stressful it can be to adapt to a new workflow system. That's why we've made sure our support team has experience working with comparable businesses and that they're always available to make the transition process as smooth as possible. Use evidence to relieve concerns. After a while, you'll notice that many prospects raise the same old objections. Once you recognize these objections, prepare yourself with evidence that demonstrates you have a list of happy clients who initially voiced the same concerns as they did. Of course, you could easily create fake stories about customers you've recently sold to, but the best tactic is to prepare customer testimonials and case studies in advance. This way, it's impossible to be caught out on a lie and removes the need to tell any in the first place. So those were five examples of how you can overcome objections. There are many more ways to do this. However, in my personal experience, the best way to handle objections is to take care of them before they even arise. Moving on. Now I would like to talk about the basics of closing. Another thing that helps you get closer to the deal is taking the initiative and triggering the process by using particular words and phrases. Here are a few that will help you on your way. Avoid. Turn what most people perceive to be a negative word into a positive. Like this. Avoid poor customer support and slow response times from other hosting companies. Imagine. Put the person in an optimistic mood by asking them to imagine a certain situation if they purchase your goods or services. Ask them to imagine how your solution will help them make their lives easier. Or ask them to imagine how your solution can help them achieve their goals. Save. This is probably the most commonly used trigger word because it works. For example, save on your annual subscription by, or save 20% by acting today. Save can also be applied to time. And who doesn't want to save time and be more productive, right? How does that sound? This is a powerful phrase in sales. Use this phrase to keep the conversation going when you're unsure about something. Instead of guessing, you can offer the prospect a solution and then ask them, how does it sound? Free. Just like the word save, free is commonly used in sales because it's highly effective. For example, receive a free upgrade after your six months with us, or purchase our annual plan and get two months completely free. When prospects hear the word free, they're instantly tempted to get their wallets out. All right, so those are some of the trigger words you can use to help you close sales. Although you should try to close a sale on every call, it won't always be possible on your first attempt. Keep notes, keep positive, and nail it on the follow-up call. So you've made your pitch and asked for the order, but the prospect is sitting on the fence and saying things like, I want to think about it, or I'll call you back. What should you do in this situation? Here's where you should use a technique known as looping. Looping is when you loop back to the prospect's pain points to reiterate the problems they face that you offer the solution to. You've already built a good rapport, so in a non-pushy way, begin to loop back through the points the prospect has already agreed with you about. In doing this, you take the customer back through the closing process and remind them why they should make the order right now. Looping helps you get back on the right track and closer to earning that commission. All right, thank you for listening, and that brings us to the end of overcoming objections and closing. Also, this section brings us to the end of the Science of Sales training course video series. Everything you have learned throughout this series will help you on your way to becoming a successful salesperson if you practice and apply the tips and techniques you've discovered here. I sincerely hope that each and every one of you watching go on to enjoy the same rewarding career as I have. 
And I'd like to share with you one more tip before I go. Something that I was told when I started my sales career, and I've never forgotten these words. We all become successful by helping others to become successful. Thank you for watching and good luck. Thank <laughs> you.